I bought every single piece of calisthenics equipment out there so you don't have to. So let's find out what is and isn't worth your money. For a training style that is famous for only needing your body and a free space to get a considerable workout, in bodyweight training there are loads of equipment that you can spend your hard earned money on. So let's kick things off by taking a look at gymnastics rings. Now for me, gymnastics rings are probably the most overpowered pieces of equipment in all of training, not just bodyweight training. I mean with these you basically have a gym that you can carry around in your bag and perform so many different exercises at varying levels of difficulty. We can set them up anywhere and we're only as limited as our imagination with what we can do with them. And that's before we even consider the gains that we can get from them, especially for pushing exercises. If you think you've mastered dips or push-ups, try them out on rings and find yourself humbled. Go in hand in hand with the rings for a second and we've got chalk. I made a video recently testing the effectiveness of chalk on our ability to grip and even though I use chalk all of the time, even I was surprised. We are only as strong as our weakest link and so if our palms are sweaty but our arms aren't feeling heavy, then invest in some chalk to get that grip up. I want to spend some time talking about dream machines as well. These are complex pieces of equipment often used by gymnasts to learn god-tier skills. It uses a series of pulleys and counter levers to make movements on the rings more easy. On paper, this should mean that we should be able to scale our exercises up and down in the way that we would a weights exercise, right? Well, no, and in fact, I'd argue that dream machines completely change the whole nature of a movement and without being extremely familiar with the skill, you can quickly fall into bad habits using one of these. The gymnasts use gym machines, yes, but for the amount of money that you need to pay to get your hands on one, I'd say for the typical calisthenics athletes, it's a simple no, not worth it. Now, a lot of you will know about our garden setup. It's where I film the majority of the videos for this channel, and frankly, I love it. Fine, I'll concede that it's probably not the most useful thing in the winter, but for a calisthenics athlete to be able to roll out of bed and have one of these available, it's actually my pride and joy. Now, obvious caveat is that you need garden space. And you'll probably need to agree with the person that you share your life with that this won't end up as some dusty, unused treadmill in some dark room in the house. But this setup has been so valuable because it keeps me on track when I simply just don't have time to go to the gym. It also means I'll never need to buy a doorway pull-up bar ever again. Which, aside from being the most treacherous pieces of calisthenics equipment out there, just wouldn't work for the sort of skills that I am looking to learn. This setup isn't cheap though, even if you build it yourself. But I plan on having kids one day and the idea of having this in the garden, where I can not only be present, but have a little bit more time for calisthenics play with them, just means so much to me. Now, the next piece of equipment that we have is a bit of a strange addition and it's finger bands. Now, this is something that I've never heard of until I saw them recently and decided to start using them. And the difference that they made on my wrist conditioning was quite significant. With calisthenics, we spend a lot of time in wrist and finger flexion, more so if you're working on handstand and planche work too. I've spoken before on the channel about the importance of balancing a joint through flexion and extension. Well, these finger bands allow us to effectively train finger extension, and my anecdotal account of their effectiveness is a good one. However, unless, like me, you have particularly weak wrists and they're kind of stopping you from getting skills like the handstand or planche, then this probably just isn't a piece of equipment that you would use very regularly, so save yourself the nine pounds. The next two pieces of calisthenics equipment we'll take as a pair, and they are weighted vests and weight belts. I personally like using both for different things, for horizontal pushing and pulling, where the setup can be a real issue logistically, weight vests just make far more sense. The thing is, a good weight vest will only typically go up to about 20 kilograms, and while that's good enough to add intensity to a lot of exercises, particularly if you're doing them correctly, once you start getting to far heavier lifts, belts will be the most feasible option. For both of these though, I'll say you can do a lot before you start adding weights to calisthenics lifts, so be sure to be working from a solid bodyweight foundation before you drop money on equipment that adds even more weight to yourself. Wrist wraps are another one that I get asked about a lot, and I know that there are a lot of calisthenics zealots out there that are very anti-wrist wrap, but if wrist wraps allow you to perform better overall, then more power to you. I personally still use wrist wraps from time to time, and if you use them, you fundamentally need to ask yourself why you're using them. Are they an aid helping you to get through and level up to a new skill? Or are they masking a serious issue such as overtraining or under recovery? Sticking with the wrist though, and we have parallels. The choice of whether or not to parallel is one that can shape your whole calisthenics journey. They certainly offer less stress on the wrist compared to the floor, but also subtly change the nature of many movements. I know some amazing calisthenics athletes that can only hand balance on parallettes, for example. I personally have always been someone that prefers skill work on the floor. I just think it works better for versatility as well as coming with its own set of challenges, but I still use parallettes for my strength work to take some of the heat off my wrists. Parallettes come in various different sizes. I would also throw parallel bars into this mix. 
Just for the love of God, please stop substituting a good set of parallettes for kettlebells. I get so nervous with people's wrists every time I see people balancing on those things. Resistance bands are next and these are a must at every level of calisthenics. One of the hardest things when it comes to calisthenics is bridging the gap between progressions. Bands allow us to do this in a way that is measurable and scalable, all while accumulating volume. More to the point that if we're working on an exercise but don't particularly know exactly how to do it or how it should feel or the muscles being worked in that exercise, bands allow us to understand all of this and take that understanding into our progressions that will allow us to progress further. Ab wheels are a disrespectfully underrated piece of equipment. When most people train the core, they train for creating movement, often in spine flexion. But actually, one of the main jobs of our core is to resist movement. What I love about how the ab wheel does this is that we have the resistance to spine extension that we need to create, but we also have to do it while keeping the arms straight, improving the transferability to calisthenic skills, such as the back lever or planche. And if you think you can't use an ab wheel, coupling them with resistance bands, which we just mentioned, makes them accessible for all. Crowd, there will be links down below to all of the products that we've discussed today. If there's any that you feel I've missed out, then let me know down in the comments as well. But none of these pieces of equipment will be a substitute for hard training. So if you're looking to get a view on how I train, then check out this video right here.